what, what the lady's is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Just two days after the police gunned down a black man by the name of Stephen Clark in his own backyard, it's happened again, this time in Houston. Danny Ray Thomas was walking down the street with his pants around his ankles, hitting cars as they passed by. A vehicle stopped and a man got out and an argument ensued. Police passing by decides to stop and so-called disrupt the disturbance. Moments later, Danny Ray Thomas is killed by the police. Now, one might say real fast, well, you know, he's walking down the street with his pants hanging around his ankles and hitting cars as they pass by. Well, he should have known what was going to happen. Why is hitting a car as it passed by a death sentence? From the outset, it was clear that something was wrong with this man. His sister confirmed what everybody else was probably guessing, that he had mental health issues. But even if the officer wasn't privy to that information, why not just give the man the benefit of doubt, considering the way he was behaving? This man was obviously disturbed, high, sick, or all of the above. Why is shooting someone the first course of action for these cops? We all have friends or relatives who's had a stroke, dementia, or an epileptic seizure, a diabetic incident, been accidentally poisoned or had a mix up in their legitimate medications, were drunk or high, had a mental issue or a developmental problem like autism. All of these things can result in odd behavior. But killing somebody? That should never be a consequence. Unless life is in imminent danger. They say that the cop gave Danny Thomas some verbal commands. He ignored them. The cop back pedals and then fearing for his life, you know, they cowards, he shoots him. And Danny Thomas dies at the hospital. Wow. You know, it's very, very odd that you have a guy who goes into a school with an AR-15 and mows down students and faculty and he's taken alive. Then you have a guy hobbling around with his pants around his ankles and he goes to the morgue. Make sense of this. Please, where is the consistency? You know, where is the rationale? Like, help me make sense of this. You know, these cops, it's time for their family members to start speaking out against dirty cops. Because, see, I, I'm starting to hate the family members, too. Because when these cops do this, they come home, you know, they get a warm meal and a warm hug, probably get some sex and everything, and they're probably viewed as heroes. So the family members, as far as I'm concerned, and their friends are enablers. They shouldn't have any friends. They shouldn't have any family support because family know if you just change the race, they know that they would immediately think this guy is a killer. He dirty. But because it's not happening to them and members of their race, you know, it's all good, I guess. So, I tell you what, if the police keep it up at this rate, 
I mean, you know, pressure busts a pipe. In every situation where somebody's had major conflict, that's all, that was always a tipping point. And you would think a tipping point for black folks would have been happening by now. But there'll be a tipping point at some point. And cops are really going to fear for their lives. You know, if they keep this up, it's going to happen one day. It's just bound to happen. This is just the law of average. And they're doing it. They're creating this atmosphere. If I was a cop, I would not want to be a part of that. I, would, I just wouldn't want to have it to where I actually am out there every day fearing for my life. Because cops do not fear for their life, trust me. They got all the wind. They got the government backing them. They're backed by the most powerful government in the world. They got all, they got the biggest gang in the world. And the biggest gang in the United States, the police force. And they mean, when I say police force, I mean force. When you think of gangs, there's no, the word force is not behind any gang names. <laughs> they got force for real. They got that gun, they got that badge, they got that authority. Man, they are not afraid, I'm telling you. If they were afraid, they would not just go into so-called enemy territory, Billy Badass, acting tough so much. They just wouldn't do that. They wouldn't talk so tough to people when they pull them over if they were afraid. When last time you heard a cop talk like this to you? Well, you know, well, I'm just saying, you know, y'all just, you know, just be careful out there. Now nah, they tough. They talk real hard, real tough, raise their voice. They're not cowards. What they're doing, this is just their excuse that they use. They got an excuse that works for them. And they use it. I fear for my life. That's automatic, man. You can't never tell somebody that they didn't fear for their life. You know, how do you know what they were thinking? Based on the way things are going, I'm sure that the cop in Minnesota who killed the Aussie woman is going to walk because he feared for his life, right? He got to get off. It doesn't matter if the woman walked up to the driver's side and he was in the passenger side and he shot over his partner and gunned her down. That don't even matter. The bottom line is that he feared for his life and he should walk, right? That's how it go, right? It's a cold game, man. I imagine that, that the police feel that they need to shoot people because it's easy to put the cuffs on. No more talk. What the ladies talking about? Yeah.